again. I think I have to click on it. Yeah. Okay. So here is our model of a fault in basalt, like you see on the mid oceanic ridges or on the island of Hawaii. The bottom is a broken or faulted basement with a normal fault in it, with a graben, and on top is a sequence of basalts. Okay? And then what we do is we move this central block down. We start to move the graben, of course, because of that the model extends. We move down the graben, the two halves move apart, and you start generating these cracks. Until now you don't see very much yet. But after a few centimeters of movement, what you form is you form these enormous cracks going down from the surface. And this model is a small version of the real belt. So a crack which is three centimeters can be 300 meters in nature. You can see some very sharp displacement here, real faults. And here you start seeing these enormous blocks. Okay, and if you have concentrated on this part of the experiment, you can see that this block is rotating and it kind of covers the fault zone. This fracture here has opened up. There are big releasing sections, like this here, which really make open parts of the fault zone. And if I move this a little further, I have created a small model which reproduces in many, many aspects the faults in nature. And now, of course, we can study it in great detail. We can dig a hole in it. We can look in three dimensions. So these models are very, very useful to understand the internal workings of graben structures in basal sequences. Okay, so today we talked about faults. I explained to you that faults can be seismic or aseismic. I explained to you that some faults are very, very big, thousands of kilometers. Other faults are just centimeters in size. Um, I have explained to you that the size of faults is distributed in a self-similar way. If you make a log-log diagram of the number of faults against the size, you will get a straight line, which is the fractal dimension. I explained to you the geometry with the fault tips, um, the relays. Uh, I explained to you some of the features of fault planes with the striations of the fault planes and the ways that we can tell which way the faults has moved. Then we did a little bit of mechanics, trying to understand why faults form and the ways they fall form. We have learned that the fault plane is closer to sigma 1 than exactly halfway between sigma 3 and sigma 1. And this is the reason why normal faults in extension are steep and reverse faults in compression are shallow. Although the same Moore circle describes the mechanics of the two. And then we talked a little bit about the effects of faults on the flow of fluids. We have seen how faults can be very open along these releasing sections. Faults can op contain open fractures, and in these open fractures, uh, groundwater can flow or hydrothermal fluids can flow, and they can form gold deposits, for example. But other faults can be sealing. They can be smeared full of clay, and then they can hinder the motion of groundwater, or they can hinder the motion of oil and gas. And then finally, I've given you a short introduction to one of our research projects on the island of Hawaii, where we study faults in basalts. The next lecture, I will talk about fractures. Faults are sharp discontinuities in rocks which move, and fractures are discontinuities which just open but don't move. Thank you very much.